In this lecture, we're going to talk about bomb calorimeters. So a bomb calorimeter measures change in energy of the reaction when at least one of the reactants is a gas. And when we talk about gases, we need to remember that gases compress and expand. So what bond calorimeters do is they intentionally keep the volume constant by letting the reaction occur in a steel container, in a steel cylinder. So no expansion of the steel cylinder occurs. So let's compare bond calorimeters to coffee cup calorimeters. In a coffee cup calorimeter, expansion or compression was not a problem. And that's because our reactants were liquids and solids. Now liquids and solids don't compress. And so when we speak about coffee cup calorimeters, we talk about constant pressure. In a bomb calorimeter, we talk about constant volume, and pressure is allowed to change. So, let's look at the structure of a bomb calorimeter. Now, bomb calorimeters are composed of two cylinders, a large one and a small one. The outer one is called the insulated chamber, and it insulates the entire system. So energy is not allowed to leave our bomb calorimeter. The innermost chamber is called a steel bomb, and it's basically the location of our reaction. This is where our reaction occurs, and it's made from steel so that the gas can't expand our system. Now this thermometer is placed into the water, and everything is sealed off. And our goal is to basically change or um, measure the change in temperature of our reaction, okay? The same way we do in a coffee cup calorimeter. So, let's look at this section here. A sample of a known mass is added to a dish. So let's look at the combustion of glucose in the presence of oxygen plus some heat or gives us carbon dioxide and water. So let's place a small sample of glucose into our dish found inside the steel bomb. And let's fill our bomb with oxygen, right? Because oxygen is required for burning to occur. Next, let's place the steel bomb into a water-filled cylinder and let's seal off the top. Let's place a thermometer inside this section, okay? Now, let's uh, ignite the sample using some electrical spark and this will allow this reaction to occur. Now, when this reaction begins occurring, carbon dioxide is produced. So, more gas is produced, so this system, the pressure increases. An increase in pressure means there, there is an increase in temperature when the volume is held constant. And the increase in temperature will transfer energy from this section to the surroundings, to the water. And you could measure the change in temperature using this thermometer. So the initial and final temperature, just like you would in a coffee cup calorimeter. So, finally, you can use the change in temperature and the formula to calculate our energy change. Now let's look at our first law of thermodynamics, which states that change in energy is equal to heat plus work. Now in this case, no mechanical work is done and no PV work is done because change in volume is zero. So change in energy is simply the heat or a change in um, internal energy of our system. So what we simply do is we simply use this formula by using the total mass plus the specific heat capacity, plus change in energy, or I'm sorry, change in temperature, and we could find our change in energy. 